welcome to week 10 of the Lock Around the Clock. And as always at Gino Palooza Productions, we rally with the rally cap. I know it's Thursday, but it's Sunday somewhere. And that Sunday is in San Diego tonight as my Raiders take on the San Diego Chargers. Gino Bisconti, we are going to crush you guys tonight. I don't know about that. But anyway, we look to win. My first lock of the week is going to come for Thursday Night Football because everybody's excited Thursday Night Football is here. That means you get football three nights a week in the pros and you get college. And ESPN has been nice enough to throw a Tuesday night game on. It's awesome. Um, anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about, the lock for Thursday night. Now, the Raiders are in San Diego. Carson Palmer starting to get into the offense a little bit. Hushman Zada has been actually getting the ball. He just inserted him like that. Darius Hayward Bay. DHB, where did you go, brother? This week, we're going to be without, obviously, again, run DMC, but Michael Bush will be out there, and you're going to see more Bush tonight than you will see in a 1973 porno because they're going to run that ball down, his, down the San Diego throat. Last year, he ran for 199 yards over San Diego in two games, and that was with DMC playing. But tonight, we're going to look for a ground-and-pound sort of game. The Raiders are getting... Seven points tonight, uh, although I'm not going to take the Raiders and tell you to take them and take the seven points, although it probably would be the way to go if you're going to take a side. What I am going to do, though, is I am taking the under. The total in this game is 47 and a half. Both of these teams are coming into a short week off of Sunday going to a Thursday night game. Uh, both of them are kind of unsure, really, on their offenses. Phillip Rivers, for the first time, threw three interceptions in one game. The air attack has been there. Obviously, San Diego scored three touchdowns. Last week, all to Vincent Jackson. Malcolm Floyd will be out, and yes, Gates is back healthy. But do not look for them to pass. Last week, the Raiders got gassed for two nights. I said gashed. <laughs> they got gassed for 299 yards by the Denver Broncos, who would never would have thought I saw that coming. But look for Tolbert. Matthews is banged up still. He's coming back slow. I think Tolbert's going to have the 60-40 share on this load. But look for them to round, uh, ground it out against the Raiders. Look for a slow-moving game here. Look for the Raiders also to be a little unsure of uh, their passing game uh, just to protect, I think, the ball and let the uh, let the offense stay on the field a little longer. They don't want to turn the ball over. They don't want to put the game in Palmer's hands. Look for Bush to take command of this game. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. The total's 47-and-a-half. I look for this to possibly be a 21-17 game when it all is said and done. Um, I don't look for it to be that high scoring. So in the Raiders-San Diego Thursday night, first game on the NFL Network for the season, take the under. That is my Thursday night lock, 47 and a half, take the under. Now on to the lock around the clock for Sunday, starting at 1 o'clock. Buffalo Bills are getting 5.5 at Dallas. Why are they getting 5.5? Because Dallas really isn't all that good. Buffalo is a very good offensive team, as we've seen in the past. And um, Freddie Jackson, Stevie Johnson have been hooking it up with Fitzpatrick. They've been doing it through the air. They've been doing it mainly on the ground. Freddie Jackson has been a beast this year. And as always, don't forget, even if the, the Cowboys are winning this game, they always have a greater chance of losing it at the end. Yes, they do. And I think Buffalo is going to keep right up with them here. Buffalo has a very good record in regular season against the NFC. And they've done very well um, against the uh, NFC this year as they are 2-1 and one away against the spread, Buffalo. And as a favorite at home, the Cowboys are only 1-3. and three. Let's look at this game as one of these games that I will tell you, the Cowboys most likely will be in this game. They might even win the game, but they're down a couple of receivers as Miles Austin is dealing with a hamstring issue. Laurent Robinson is going to definitely get the ball, and he's going to be... He's going to take over that role. Uh, Des Bryant is going to get double and triple teamed. I don't look for them to be able to run well on the Bills. I do look for the Bills to bounce back from that terrible loss last week to the Jets. They're on the road, and they look good on the road. I look for the Buffalo Bills to cover the 5.5 in a game where they probably backdoor win it because the Cowboys are great for giving up games at the end. Take the Bills for the 1 o'clock lock plus the 5.5. Four o'clock, what do we got there? Well, we got a classic matchup between the Giants and San Francisco. San Francisco has reeled off seven in a row. They are seven and one. However, the Giants pulled out a great game last week on the road in New England in a tough environment. I know New England's defense is just pitiful this year. And it took uh, Eli Manning to that fourth quarter, the last minute and 23, to get it into Jake Ballard's hands and win the game. However, in this game here, San Fran, number one, has won way too many games to win a uh, another game in a row. 
The Giants have had the rally cry. They got some players back. Uh, Knicks will be back this week. Victor Cruz and Ballard and Manningham have been a three-headed monster for the Giants, and their passing attack has been very good. Now, San Fran, don't get me wrong, they've been stuffing the run and doing very well, and with Ahmad Bradshaw questionable for this game, I look for um, them to try to pound it and set up some three-receiver sets, and I think they're going to throw it. I believe that probably would be the best way to attack San Fran in this game. San Fran, on the other hand, they've been running the ball well with Frankie Gore. But Frankie Gore is a little bit banged up, and the Giants' defense is going to be pretty solid this week. And I think they're going to what they're going to do is they're going to force Alex Smith to do something he hasn't done, and that's throw the ball. Also, look at this: San Fran. You want know the games they won this year? They beat Seattle, who hasn't. They beat Cincinnati, thirteen to eight. However, that was a pretty close game if you remember. They beat Philly, who hasn't. Tampa Bay, who hasn't. They beat Detroit on the road, which was a good game. But if you remember, Detroit at that point had lost uh, job at best. And uh, to be honest with you, it's probably Stafford. He just had a bad game. He was getting beat up defensively in that game. I think that that game was their turning point. Uh, at that, they, they just had a bad game. Let's put it that way. We'll chalk it up. And the reason why I'm saying that is because San Fran's remaining wins after that were Cleveland, Washington. You know they lost to? The Cowboys in week two. And I'll tell you what, that game there was a game where, guess what, the Cowboys were passing. What does Eli Manning do best? He passes. Look for the Giants to go in and cover the three and a half and win this game outright out in Candlestick, Three Com Park, whatever you want to call it. Take the Giants at 4 o'clock for the 4 o'clock lock. 8 o'clock lock, we got, of course, only one game at 8 o'clock, New York Jets at home against the New England Patriots coming off a horrible loss at home to the Giants. New England has not been known for anything on the defensive side. As a matter of fact, Hainsworth, which I could have told you back when they got him in the preseason, was going to be gone at some point. Of course, he's disgruntled, and then he left, and he got, he got cut by the team. Their defense isn't going to get any better. The Jets look to shine here. They should be able to gash them with uh, – I said gash again. I'm going with that word today. But they should be able to do well with Sean Green and LT uh, getting into the open field. This game here, the over is what we're looking at at 47 and a half at Giant Stadium in which the Jets are at home. Now, in this game, look for Sanchez to get off against this weak, anemic New England defense. Look for Brady to bounce back and have an equally good game because when these two get together, it's usually a high-scoring event. Look for the over to come in, 47 and a half. We're going over in the Giant, in the, in Giant Stadium with the Jets in New England. And that's my 8 o'clock lock. We're looking to go... 4-0 and oh this week is last week we went 2-1 and one and recovered from our dismal two weeks that I told you we were going to recover from. And if you took that Monday night game I threw up last minute, you took the Bears and covered against the Eagles on Monday night. So there you have it. You have the lock, the 1 o'clock, the 4 o'clock, the 8 o'clock lock, the Thursday night lock. So all you got to do is take it to the book, take it to the bank, and as always, you take it easy.